All right, let's do this. Uh, wow. You have to get up. Do what they do. But <laughs> that was insane. Let's not get out of our zone. Come on. I make go records, baby. I'm liking this. Hello and welcome to Hawks Recap. My name is Clay. Thanks for tuning in. Blackhawks playing their 26th game of the season. Second straight night playing the Colorado Avalanche back end of a back-to-back. -back. Second straight night that the Hawks get, well, demolished on the scoreboard. Yep, not a good couple games. I'm beginning to think that the Avalanche just are not a good matchup for the Hawks. We already knew that the Hawks had trouble with teams that were fast. Well, unfortunately, the Avalanche are not only fast, but they are strong as well. And, well, it also helps that the Avalanche have Miko Rantanen back in the lineup. He is a big boy. And, yeah, I mean, if the Avalanche haven't been as injured as they have been, I, I could easily see them leading this division. But they've been struck hard by injuries, but you can see even with those injuries... Well, at least some of those injuries, they still um, are just a force. Robin Leonard in net for the Hawks in this one as Corey Crawford started the front end of the back-to-back -back last night. Duncan Keith, though, not in the lineup. Groin injury suffered last night. It showed <laughs> that he wasn't in the lineup because the defense looked absolutely lost out there without him. I'm not saying that Duncan Keith would have helped the Hawks win this game, but... It showed uh, the defense was uh, just all over the place. He's the type of guy that you don't really know how much he really does until he's not there. It was very apparent tonight, especially with the speed and the talent that the Avalanche have. Now, the first five minutes of this game was pretty decent for the Hawks. They came out pretty well. Uh, unfortunately, they had to go on the PK very early, a very, very, I thought, bad call uh, early on, first shift, Jonathan Taves gets called for slashing. There was no slash there, but... All right, missed call. Let's deal with it. And the Hawks do. Ends up Zach Smith, Brandon Saad, two-on-one. Shorthanded opportunity. Zach Smith with the sauce over to Brandon Saad, and he puts it home. Hawks up one nothing. All right, so this might be a different game than last night. At least this start seems all right, but then a couple minutes later... Anton Whedon playing in his first career NHL game gets called for holding on Ratnan. It was kind of a weak call, but I can see why they called it. Avalanche score on that power play and tie it at one, and, well, it was pretty much all downhill from there. The rest of the game really doesn't need to be spoken about. Avalanche go on to score seven goals. The Hawks score three goals. Patrick Kane uh, extends his point streak to 15 games, so at least we got that going for us which is nice. Now the Hawks gave up three goals on seven shots in the first period once again to the Avalanche. Last game against the Avalanche with Crawford starting, a lot of people were talking about, hey, we should probably put Leonard in at that point. Crawford's not having his A game. Well, it happens to Leonard tonight, and don't hear a peep out of people like, is it just because Crawford was in net? You thought Leonard would do better in that situation? Maybe. Maybe it's not the goalie. Ever thought about that? Maybe we shouldn't be too reactionary on those types of things. Maybe we shouldn't really just pinpoint our criticism on just the goalie. Maybe it's kind of the play in front of him. That's what it was tonight as well, just like it was last night. The Avalanche, once again are the type of team that if you make mistakes, and the Hawks made plenty tonight, more than they did last night, they make you pay. They take those mistakes, turn them into opportunities because of their speed, and not only that, but they capitalize on those opportunities. I mean, they they just put the puck in the back of the net. They knew how to do that. Hawks hitting a couple posts early. Would have been nice to score those. Not saying it would have won them the game, but that can be the difference in, well, being in a game and, this game where you're just never really in it. Now, I don't want to alarm anyone, but if we look at last year, 25th game, 26th game, Hawks lost both those games. Zero points in those two games. That was the beginning of an eight-game losing streak where we lost every single one of those eight games in regulation, meaning we got zero points during that eight-game stretch. Zero points out of 16 possible points. That was 
the low point of last year and last year featured a couple low points if you recall but yeah that was that was the bottom right now 25th game 26th game both losses 5-2 loss 7-2 loss pretty bad losses uh, does this mean we're going to be on an eight game losing streak again at this point i hope not i, I don't think so <laughs> I think really what we saw in these two games, I think what we saw is that the Avalanche are probably the worst matchup in the NHL for the Hawks. Speed, size, talent, the Avalanche have it, and the Hawks have trouble with it. If we look at all the other teams the Hawks have faced this year, all the other games, all the other losses that the Hawks have had, they've been close games. They've been basically one-goal losses. There's a couple empty netters thrown in there, but for the most part, they were close. Hawks can play with pretty much every other team, but not the Avalanche, it seems. It seems like it's just that's just one of those teams. Now, the Hawks didn't play well in these two games. I'm not trying to excuse them for that. But Hawks getting down early 3-1 to one in both the games last night and tonight. Down early. Basically makes them chase the entire game, and once again, with the speed and the talent and the strength and, and everything that the Avalanche have, when you do that, it basically compounds mistakes, and the Avalanche can take advantage of those mistakes. They can take those mistakes, turn them into opportunities, and not only that, but capitalize on opportunities. It doesn't matter if Crawford gives up three goals on seven shots. It doesn't matter if Leonard gives up three goals on seven shots. It doesn't matter. The Hawks have the best goalie tandem in the league. The Hawks' defense, especially without Duncan Keith, the Hawks in general, just in front of Leonard or Crawford, it's not going to work out against the Avalanche. I think these two games are just those types of games where you you hope to learn from, you hope to get better, but you got to move on and you got to think, we can play better against other teams. This team just, hopefully we don't ever have to play them in the playoffs if we make it there. Hopefully um, we don't have to play them too often. Now, Avalanche are in our division. We got two more games in December against them. But other than that, uh, we don't have to play them for a while after that. So that'll be a nice break in those kind of dog day months of the winter. But for now, it sucks. But you got to move on. So, yeah, there's not really a whole lot more I care to say about these two games. They weren't good games. Tough matchup. Got down early in both games. I don't know. I don't know what to say. So, with that said, thanks for tuning in. Thank you for watching this episode of Hawks Recap. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Like, share, and subscribe. I appreciate that as always. But most importantly, stay safe. Make good decisions. Try to enjoy your weekend, the remainder of your holiday weekend. I'll see you next time.